Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about episode 8 of series 15 of Taskmaster. Sorry this one's quite late, but I was just basically unable to film anything recently. So yes, let's just get straight into it and again we'll start as usual with the prize task. The prize task this episode was to bring in the thing that you take everywhere but struggle to fit in your bag. This is a very um, difficult category, I think, because you've kind of got to bring in something interesting enough to get you points, but then also viable enough that you're gonna have that you would have been trying to carry it everywhere. So I did think that this one was quite difficult. I did really enjoy Frankie's one. He's really good at bringing in an item that's not necessarily a good prize, but bringing in a story along with it, which really ups the prize in my opinion. I think he's doing a really good job of that. So this one was a picture of him and his son at a gig he was doing and then he went into the story of his son trying to tell jokes uh, like the joke that was just yellow and the comment about there being lots of tight buns at the football game. It was just really really funny and I really enjoyed it and then the justification that it was difficult to carry because he had quite a small bag I thought was really good. So yeah I really enjoyed um, his prize. Again not necessarily the actual prize itself but the story he's telling around the prize was really, really strong. Ivo went down a similar approach. He said he went for something that was more sentimental because um, he's been quite bad at the lol-based prizes. Um, and this was just a puzzle that he bought, uh, that he does with his daughter. Um, so I thought that was really sweet. Again, not the best prize, but again, quite a nice story around it. Jenny's prize I thought was quite good, which is the inflatable bed. I don't believe that she does carry it around everywhere, but it would be something that would be difficult to carry if you did want to take it somewhere. So I like that. And then I loved Alex's joke about David Schwimmer um, always sleeping on an inflatable bed, which was just a guess. He just made it up, which I thought was really funny. The comedic timing there was great. And Kyle again, bringing in something very similar as well, which is a fold out chair. Again, it's not, I don't think it's as good as the inflatable bed, but it's good enough. Um, and then May bringing in a like whiskey in a flask, but then going for the whole tiny bag, tiny wallet joke, which I did really enjoy. Overall, not great prizes, but um, I think in the episode they described it as like the worst selection of prizes ever, which I completely disagree with. There have been worse, <laughs> worse prizes than this. Um, but again, nothing too exciting in terms of prizes, but I did really enjoy a lot of the uh, yeah, the comedy and the discussions around the prizes I thought were really strong in this episode. Um, definitely a lot stronger than the prizes themselves. So the first proper task this episode was to put as many pineapples on the platform as possible. And this one I thought was a really good one. I thought there were quite a few little tricks and exploits they could do with this. There was a rule that you couldn't get wet by getting the pineapples. So obviously that kind of prevented them from going in the water and getting them themselves. So I did think this allowed the contestants to be very creative with their approaches. Um, there were things that I thought were quite good about the um, pineapple, like the big one being tethered down and being made to look like it was metal and giving them a magnet. I thought that was really, really good. The realization that they're not gonna actually get it in with the magnet that they're struggling so much with, like that is a strong magnet. Um, so I really liked all of that. I thought Jenny was really smart by realizing it was tethered down and cutting it because I didn't realize it was tethered down. Um, like from our view on, so yeah, I thought that was really good. I really loved watching Frankie and Kyle do this because they were just both kind of a uh, bit rubbish at it and a bit chaotic, which I really enjoyed just struggling so much with the magnet um, and then not doing that great. Otherwise, I liked that Kyle immediately when he saw the other stuff that they had, he immediately knew what it was and that he'd been tricked. And Frankie just didn't have a clue, just walked past it. And I thought that was hilarious. Just the Differences in their like reactions to things was just very funny. There were a great contrast to have um, on this task. Jenny, as I said, I thought she was fantastic in this one. I thought she was very smart to the like I said, cut the tether and was able to bring it over mostly like pretty well. Um, Ivo was well, very good finding the other stuff um, and did was the only one really to try to get to the um, pineapples rather than bringing the pineapples towards him. It didn't really work. Um, I think he did get a little bit wet, but I'm not mad at him being like, he didn't, I didn't want him to get disqualified. So I'm not mad at that um, because he did such a good job otherwise. Um, and yeah, I thought he, he did really well on this one. He was also very hilarious. Lots of great quotes from this task from him. So yeah, I just thought it was all just yeah, very, very strong. I would have loved to see him try to move across the water a bit more, you know, like standing in the wheelbarrow, uh, doing lots of things like that. I just, yeah, I thought he was really, really good. May in this task I thought was fantastic as well. I think they managed to exploit the task very effectively. I think May's get definitely getting very familiar with the format of the show. Um, I think they have been throughout the whole series really. 
but knowing that they will have hidden stuff somewhere but not just not really looking properly enough um, and then going for the exploit that is drawing all the pineapples, drawing loads of pineapples and having them on the platform. And I've seen a lot of people argue that this shouldn't have counted. I personally believe that this should have counted. I thought it was a really good way of getting around the task. I think it's different to the banana task, the banana thing, because for me that was get the banana out of the tree and the word banana isn't the banana that they're talking about. Um, but again, it's kind of like one of those things where it's not a big deal to me. But with this one, especially as all the other pineapples weren't like actual pineapples, like the actual fruit, they were like an inflatable pineapple, a golden rubber pineapple. They weren't all real pineapples. And because they did draw pineapples, I think it's as e it's equal to the other stuff that they had on the, uh, on the water in the fact that it's an interpretation of a pineapple. It's not a real thing. Whether or not those are good drawings of a pineapple is a different question, but I do think that they deserved to get the points for that. I think it was a great way of getting around it. Um, yeah, so I don't know why people are so mad about that. I don't know. But I love that May immediately went into justifying it, knowing that there'd be some trouble with it. And I like that Frankie backed them up and kept with his opinion that it it counts as it. I loved May beginning to stir up a bit more trouble there. Definitely the centre of a lot of controversy in this series, which I love, um, especially as well we had May saying that they enjoyed not working with the team. So maybe this episode, this uh, task took place immediately after the team tasks where overall they were quite successful as a team, but obviously they did run into a few issues, which I can imagine might have frustrated people. But yeah, so I thought that was really funny. It just a little bit of drama, which I really enjoyed. The second task this episode was the like repurpose the umbrella task. This I think was a pretty decent creative one. I liked that it gave the contestants the same thing to work with and we got a pretty different attempt from every single contestant, which I really enjoyed. Um, Kyle's one I thought was good. Um, it was very silly, very funny. Um, just kind of the kind of thing that you'd imagine just kids would be playing with and like that kind of imagination. Um, I, yeah, I thought it was very silly. I, I don't think the actual reconstruction of it was that good. I liked the, uh, um, like the idea of it. I don't think it was probably executed at that as well as I was expecting it to be. Um, whether or not, I don't think he should have gotten five points, maybe like four, but Greg gave him the five points because of the, the complex narrative, which is a very Greg thing to do. So it's, <laughs> I did quite enjoy that. Ivo's one, I definitely agree was the worst one. It was just mixing a cocktail in an umbrella and not a particularly good one either. Um, I definitely feel like he could have been a bit more inventive with it. It, it doesn't seem like he really put much thought into it. Um, but I liked the kind of addition of the little umbrellas in the cocktail as well. Yeah, it was it was fun. But again, just not as inventive as everybody else is. Like he didn't really do much. He didn't do anything with the umbrella, which I think is what made it the, the worst one. May's one, I really liked the Bosco the dog. I thought it was really, really cute. And um, yeah, I just think that one was the most inventive. It repurposed the umbrella very, very well. Um, so I definitely think they should have got five points, maybe Kyle four. And again, there is a little bit of a narrative there that I'm surprised Greg didn't try to unpick a bit. But yeah, I thought it was definitely the most creative and accomplished the most in the time that they were given. Frankie and Jenny's were very good as well. I think they went down the very like classic route of what to do, kind of turning it into clothing. Um, I liked Frankie's. I think Frankie deserved like, yeah, I think Frankie deserved maybe one more than Jenny because as they did say, he did utilize the uh, the rest of the umbrella, not just like the fabric -y bit. So yeah, I like that, the skirt, the fascinator, very, very nice. Jenny's was good as well. Again, Jenny's kind of had a bit of a narrative as well. I liked that she went for a more like fashion show, um, trying to make it feel a bit more upscale, which I really enjoyed. Um, but overall, I thought this was a decent task. It's not my favorite creative task, but I did enjoy everybody's attempts. I thought it was very funny. And yeah, I liked, it was very different to other creative tasks that we've got as well. The next task was the put as many things on the jelly task heaviest amount of things wings, which I thought was quite a weird way of phrasing it. So put as many things on, but then it's like the heaviest amount of things. It's kind of like mixing the quantity and the weight. I feel like they should have either gone with one or the other. Like it was a bit confusing to me, I thought. Um, but yeah, I've described it as vintage, which I definitely think it is kind of like a vintage Taskmaster task. It's very classic. It's kind of what you'd expect um, from Taskmaster. I did really enjoy this one. There were a couple of lots, like there were a few different approaches. Um, Ivo's, I thought his brick idea was pretty good. He should have gone the route that Kyle did and taken the side bricks off at the 10 minute mark so that they would be on the jelly at 
the 10 minute mark. Alex did confuse me a bit in this one as well, in the fact that he said there had to be balanced on, which there wasn't really anything in the task that specified that they had to be balanced on. I'm surprised I didn't get Susie Dent back in and clarify that they had like being on something, if it's touching it, it's on. So if the bricks are touching the side and the top, like it's on the jelly. Um, so I did feel like that was quite confusing and it, I feel, feel like Alex kind of nitpicking Ivo a bit, put him off a lot um, in his attempt at the task. Normally Alex is just kind of watching and observing and not really giving much guidance or um, criticism while they're actually doing the task normally. Whereas I feel like in this season, he's definitely talking to the contestants while they're doing the tasks a lot more, um, which normally I quite enjoy, but I felt like this really put Ivo off and I feel like if he'd got, if he'd just done what he was doing with the bricks in the first place and then went into the studio, I don't think they would have disqualified him um, because it was touching the jelly. Yeah, I just, I didn't really like that. I thought he had went through a really creative idea and then got put off doing it, which I don't think was really fair. I think it would have been really nice to see where he would have gone with it if he allowed to take it a bit further. Kyle approached this task in a very classic way, just putting a few things on the jelly. It wasn't particularly inventive, but given all the restrictions that were put on the contestants after the task was read, I think like he did a very good job, went down as, in as the task intended, balancing a bunch of things on the jelly, which again, wasn't the point of the task. It was just to put the things on the jelly. But I thought he was really smart by taking his hands off at the 10 minute point so that it counted. Um, I guess they could have, no, I was gonna say, I guess they could have like, put props on them so that they weren't touching it, but something else was to keep things up. But I feel like then people would have, Alex would have maybe said that that's not balancing it. Um, I don't really know. May did get pretty unlucky with that one. Um, I do think disqualifying them for breaking the jelly was fair enough. Like it was very clearly stated in the task that it was, that was what would happen. So I'm not really mad about them getting disqualified. I think, yeah, it was the, the rule was if anything other than the jelly touches the duck, you're disqualified. Jenny, I thought had a good idea. Again, this is kind of going off what, like what's on the jelly. I feel like I prefer Ivo's approach more because it's touching the jelly. If Jenny had maybe got a smaller box that the sides touch the jelly and then sat on it, I thought that would have been the, the best way of doing it. Um, because it's touch, I think if it's touching the jelly, it counts as being on the jelly. And again, as I said, I'm surprised I didn't get Susie Dent in to like justify and give definitions of the word because they have done that with saying stuff is on the thing. Like with the, the mat on the hill, that I, I feel like, just the wording around this task didn't really do anybody any favors because I think Jenny did have a outside the box thinking on this one. And unfortunately, like she did get one point, but unfortunately it just is one of those things where normally out of the box thinking is a really good thing to do. But in this one, it was just basically you had to do the task in the kind of like simplest way really. Um, apart from Frankie, I think Frankie went down a really good route, which was to put the third law of thermodynamics, which predicts the end of the universe or something on the jelly, which I thought was a really creative way of doing it and arguing that it is heavy. I feel like somebody's done that before, maybe with like a book, but I might be misremembering that. Um, but I liked that approach. I thought it was a good way of doing it. Apparently he, it's the second law of thermodynamics that predicts that, but um, yeah, he justified it well enough. Um, so I think, yeah, he definitely deserved the five points on this. I think it was, a, the yeah, just, I liked the out of the box thinking on this. Uh, Doing think a bit more different than everybody else. And on to the studio task. This studio task, I kind of have a bit of mixed feelings about. I thought it was quite fun, um, very high energy, competitive, playing the teams against each other, which I liked. However, again, I just do think there's some kind of unfairness with the team tasks. Normally they're able to make it as equal as possible or at least equal enough. Like some tasks benefit the team of two, some tasks benefit the team of three. But I think in this series, all of the tasks benefit the team of three. And in this one as well, they tried to do that accommodation of they had to hold hands, but in the sense that, okay, you've got two hands throwing on each team, but it's so different to have two people throwing with one hand than one person throwing with two hands because realistically you're not gonna throw with both hands. So I feel like they should have maybe done maybe like on a whistle, 
each like they have to swap who's throwing maybe or maybe they could have got a like what they did in the earlier seasons where they got somebody from the past season to come on and be on the team of two to equal things out maybe they should have done that it's really fun seeing a past contestant come back on the show so maybe they should have done something like that um but there's a couple of things that just made me a bit not uncomfortable that's not really the right word but just gave me like just made me feel a bit off and one of the things was that may looked very uncomfortable towards the end of this task um like kind of like very sheltered down some people think that maybe they got hit in the face with the ball or maybe it was just all a bit kind of like overwhelming like being hit constantly by um like balls just isn't fun so yeah that i didn't really like that and then frankie's like suit unbuttoning i thought that was quite unfortunate um, they definitely should have had better suits for that. Like, I, I don't... Like, he played it off very well. He made it funny, but I can imagine that could have been very uncomfortable for some people. Like, especially that he didn't really have a chance to fix it. Like, I don't know. If that was somebody else, like, they might have been really upset by that, especially since it's being on TV and, like, didn't have anything proper underneath, like a vest or a, or a T-shirt on or something. Um, maybe that was his choice. Maybe that's what he decided to wear. But yeah I just feel like it wasn't really thought out that well like I'm not surprised that the buttons did pop off it should have been like a zip or um something like that or velcro that's easier to put back on quickly yeah so I didn't really enjoy that part of it um and yeah again just the fact that it was quite unfair if this was the only ta team task that felt a bit unfair I probably wouldn't be that bothered by it but it's just the consistent nature of the team tasks being so unfair in this season um that's yeah like again I know a lot of people not necessarily on my channel that kind of get mad about caring about the points but a lot of people specifically on like the reddit and there's like a facebook group as well for taskmaster that do get annoyed about people caring about the points and i do get it like in the end the points don't really matter but it is like a competition game i like that people get into it and are rooting for certain people and i don't really take it that seriously like in the end i'm happy with like i just love the show i love the the games i love the tasks but like when things are unfair um like in the actual task itself not like when we're talking about greg scoring greg is greg we know that like he is very weird with the scoring he doesn't really care about the scoring a lot of the time he just kind of does what he feels like so yeah i feel like there is a difference between the tasks being unfair and then greg scoring being a bit off i'm not really that bothered about greg scoring like on my channel it's all just a bit of fun and games talking about the um the show and how i would have scored things but when the tasks are inherently unfair, it's so different. Like it, it does impact the show a little bit. Um, so yeah, I just hope they fix that in the next season. I thought it was a great episode anyway. I think the season's been quite strong with, especially in terms of the contestants. Um, so yes, if you like this video, then please give it a like. It really helps the channel and comment down below your thoughts on this episode and subscribe if you wanna see more videos to do with Taskmaster. I'll have some more out for you soon. Thank you for watching.